The steering gear system you see is a 4 RAM type electrohydraulic steering gear. There are two sets of hydraulic power packs comprising of hydraulic pumps and oil reservoir. The directional control valve changes the direction. Automatic and manual isolation valves isolate the defective system in case of emergency. Bypass valves for each set of rams bypass the defective rams when isolated. Relief valves maintain the system oil pressure within limits. The control box receives helm order from bridge and sends electric signals to directional control valve. Pressurized hydraulic oil is supplied to the cylinders. The tiller arm converts the linear motion of the rams into rotary motion of the rudder stock. Potentiometer senses the rudder stock position and sends a feedback to control box. Check the hydraulic oil level in the tank. Insufficient hydraulic oil lever will lead to poor performance of the system. However, alarms are provided to warn the operator. Check whether the manually operated isolation valves are in open position. If they are shut inadvertently, it will affect the ram movement. Check the grease quantity and oil level. Insufficient lubrication will wear out the components. Check whether power supply is available for both the steering motors. Standby steering motor power supply should be available for emergencies. The number one steering pump motor is started. The main pump and the servo pump start running. Check the amperage of the motor. Electrically operated isolating valves are kept in open position. Bypass valve is actuated to closed position by the oil supplied by the servo pump. When no helm is ordered, the bidirectional control valve is in mid position. When port order is given from the bridge, the control box sends a signal to the bidirectional control valve that moves to the forward side. Pressurized oil is pumped into RAM 2 and 3. The pressurized oil moves the RAM. The tiller in turn moves the rudder stock from the midship to port position. The return oil from RAM 1 and 4 flows back to the pump return side. When the rudder stock reaches the desired helm angle, the potentiometer sends a signal to the control box. The control box sends a signal to bidirectional control valve. The valve is pushed back to its initial position. This blocks the oil flow and stops the movement of the ram. When starboard order is given from the bridge, the control box sends a signal to bidirectional control valve. The valve moves aft side. The pressurized oil is pumped into ram 1 and 4. The pressurized oil moves the ram. The tiller in turn moves the rudder stock from the port to starboard position. The return oil from ram 3 and 2 flows back to the return side of the pump. When the rudder reaches the starboard position, the potentiometer sends a signal to the control box. The control box sends a signal to the bidirectional control valve. The valve is pushed back to its initial position. This blocks the oil flow and stops the movement of the ram. Consider during the operation, there is a fracture in one of the pipes. The oil starts leaking and oil level starts dropping in the oil reservoir. The low level alarm is raised. If the leak is severe, then low level alarm sounds and the system gets automatically isolated in the following way. Number one pump is shut down. As there is no servo pump pressure, bypass valve one is open. 
Electrically operated isolating valves are closed. Number 2 pump starts automatically. Servo pump 2 keeps bypass valve 2 closed. Thus, the system 1 is isolated and system 2 is put in use. Consider during the operation, the power supply fails in the control unit. In such an emergency, an alternative communication system is used to give the helm order to the steering compartment. The bidirectional control valve is actuated manually by using the levers. When the forward side lever is operated, the bidirectional control valve moves towards forward side. The ram in turn moves the rudder to port side. When the desired rudder movement is achieved, the manual operator releases the lever and the valve comes back to its initial position. The steering gear system is shut down when the ship reaches a port and berth alongside the jetty. The steering pump motor is switched off. The control power supply at the bridge is switched off. Click the steps in each procedure to view details.